What's up guys, Jason Bad Bad Channel, and tonight I'll be doing a review for Money Not Raw, and if you hear somebody screaming in the background or something, um, it's a neighbor's kid, one of the neighbor's kids or something, I'm gonna speak loud as I can, alright, so here we go, um, sorry if I brought it up, but never mind, anyways, um, we have a, um, we see a rival of, uh, Don, uh, Don, uh, Damian Priest backstage inside the arena of CM Punk's theme hits to get things started. As Monko and the return, Pat McAfee welcome us to the show. Punk is quite the mood, good mood, which is apparent before he says a word. Um, see, um, Punk says it's been so long since he's been here in Ottawa. Uh, he says, the, to the surprise of nobody, that he has a lot of to talk about. He says the first thing he wants to congratulate John Cena on his retirement. He says he doesn't know what the future holds, but he would like to lace them up against him one last time. I hope so. Uh, he says Cena isn't here, nor is another guy named Drew McIntyre. He says he was going to check their ring skirts to make sure he's not here, but the guy with the million dollar body with 10 cent brain got himself suspended. He shows... um. From the Money Bank post show to bring fans up to speed on that, Punk says he's been teaching um, Drew a lesson for months. And it's simple one, there are consequences for your actions. When you come at Punk looking for a fight, don't be surprised when he brings one back to you. He talks about all that he has done to McIntyre over the past few months. He says there were consequences for his actions too. He says he's got fined, uh, he got fined $25,000 uh, and well well work and it was well worth it he says my tire got doubled that because he's he's a keyboard warrior he asked adam paid adam pierce uh if he can unsuspend my tire people want to see cm punk get his hands on him as he continues he um takes that uh could be a shot at AEW when he mentions the different places he'll beat McIntyre up. As he says, there are people in cheap seats behind the hard camera here. Even one of the commentators giggle at that line. He goes to speak some more, but Seth Rollins' theme cuts him off. So yeah, Seth Rollins comes out. Um, Rollins makes his way out as people seeing Punk ends up sitting on, com on the commentary desk and putting on a headset, joking with Cole and McAfee that he... Uh, probably has some time to burn mocking Rollins for his camp for his interest always taking too long after some semi uh, impromptu pan uh, uh, banter he knows uh, Rollins has finally settled in the ring Rollins sees Punk sitting on the desk and says oh now you want to sit on the sidelines he tells Punk and he I mean he always has to be the center of attention to join him in the ring he asks if he won't because he's afraid he'll kick his ass. Punk smiles and gets back in the ring and says he warned him the last time they were together that it was the last time he was going to let him speak uh, disrespectfully to him. He warns him to watch his watch what he says. Uh, Rons brings up disrespect and asks why with his talk about consequences, why does that uh, apply to anyone, everyone but him? He brings up Punk's actions at, at Money Bank affecting him and costing him the Dirty, the Dirty World Heavy Championship. He says he told Punk not to stick his nose in his business. Um, CM says he didn't stick his nose in his business. He was he was handling his own business. He says his personal his personal that like, he says this is personal to him. He says as a father and a husband he should know. He tells said that there's a guy with the bracelet with his wife and dog's name on it. That might not mean anything to him, but it does to Punk. Punk then tries to apologize, but struggles due to Rollins' facial expressions and choice of words. Punk says, I'm sorry, I apologize. I didn't mean to screw anything up for you. I'm a little uh, snow blind with rage right now. I know you do too, and I screwed, screwed up, so I'm sorry. He then says, because it's him, he can't feel that, he can't feel that bad. Seth says, you always got an excuse. Punk says he always has an answer. Rollins says there's a term for that and talk and calls and it's called gaslighting. He says he can't ever apologize for anything. He calls Punk the dumbest smart dude he's ever met in his life. He says the world does not revolve around seeing Punk. Rollins uh, explains the uh, significance of what Punk did. 
He says he can't be champion now because of him. He says Punk getting his proud of Flash from McIntyre isn't going to happen on his watch. He says he could take a cheap shot at him now, but his fragile little body isn't 100%. He says when he's cleared, he won't even be he won't a, a, even able to say Drew McIntyre before he snaps his arm and puts his arm back on and puts it back on the shelf. Rollins closes by repeating Punk's own line to him. Actions have consequences. That was an absolutely excellent opener. Yeah, that was good. All right, first match finally back. Uh, well, backstage. Uh, Adam Pierce. Uh, uh, first match is main event. Jay Uso versus Chad Gable. But we go backstage first. Backstage, Adam Pierce is shown talking with Dominic Mysterio, who was upset about being forced to tag with Liv Morgan tonight. Uh, Pierce tells him, "Tough luck. Happy Monday." And <laughs> walks off. Liv approaches Dom. Dom and Dom asks her why she's doing this. She uh says she wants the real daddy of the Mysterio tonight. Uh, uh Mysterio family. Um, inside the arena. The theme for the Yeet Master of Duty hits and out comes main event Jey Uso for our opening contest as he settles inside the square circle for schedule scheduled singles action. We should gears into our first commercial break of, of the evening. Uh, when we return, Chad Gable makes his way. Now the bell sounds off. We go. Uso gets off the hot start and then the Alpha Academy our Ace uh, takes over for a bit. After a few more minutes of action, Gable gets the ankle lock, but the lights go out. Distracted, Uso hits uh, Gable with a spear and gets the pin. So, winner is main event, Jay Uso. Um, Uso surveys the situation and quickly looks into the camera, yells, Yee, and runs off to not have to be out there and deal with what's coming. The singles piano note plays and intensifies as the crowd goes nuts and break out into a holy shit chant. Uh, Sister Abigail once again crawls up and Gable scoots out of the ring and runs to the back. She once again turns with another back package to deliver to Cole and McAfee. Cole informs McAfee that it will, has been addressed to him the last few weeks. This time, it is placed right in front of him. Alright, next match is Big Bronson Reed versus Pete Dunne. Backstage, Jackie Raymond is with Sheamus. He talks about 15 years in WWE and... How um, young talents think they can take a shortcut to the top. Bronson Reed comes in and interrupts. He talks about a match tonight and says he would fight Sheamus any other night. But tonight we head to another commercial. All right. When we turn to call, McAfee react to what just happened with the White Six. Um, delivering another uh, tape um, that will be played later. Big Bronson Reed makes his way out and sells inside the ring. For our second match of the evening, the theme for Pete Dunne hits. Out comes the bruiser weight to a crowd reaction. The bell sounds are fresh off running with this one. Um, Dunn hope hops on Reed with an awkward armbar attempt, but Reed escapes. Dunn hits a high spot on Reed on the floor. As she cares and to a mid-match commercial break, when we turn, Reed fights his way to victory with a tsunami. After the match, he continues his attack until Sheamus comes out to make the save. The two brawl with Sheamus blasting Reed with a running knee. He then blasts him with a bro kick that knocks him out of the ring and out to the floor. Sheamus tries to celebrate with Dunn, but Dunn yanks his arm away from him and walks off. Alright, so winner is Big Bronson Reed. Alright, we shoot backstage where's uh alright, we have a segment coming up which is Sami Zayn. Um we shoot but first uh we shoot backstage where WD Intercontinental Champion uh Sami Zayn is shown walking the hallways. He runs into Braun Strowman, the Miz and R Truth warming up and hugs them. We head to another commercial break when we turn. We see the Judgment Day talking backstage when Seth Rollins comes up asking to talk uh Damon Priest tells the boys he's got this and then walks off. Priest and Rollins share mutual respect and end up throwing out their gentleman's agreement. Uh Priest says after Gunther if Rollins wants another shot, just name the time and place. Back inside the arena, Grammy Award winner Zach Brown is shown sitting in the front row. Sami Zayn's theme hits, and out comes the reigning WWE Intercontinental Champion to loud ole ole chance. That's an awful chant I just did. Um, he takes exception to being considered the underdog against Bron uh, Braun Breaker. He says he feels the need to say one more time he's not an underdog against anyone. Braun Breaker's theme hits, and out he comes glaring at Zayn. Zayn. If he's going to say something or do something, Breaker just keeps staring at him. Uh, Zayn slaps the microphone into his chest. Breaker says he came out here to look the the one man in the eyes and in that locker room that 
can say they beat him. Breaker tile turns, then quickly turns back and spears Zane out of his shoes. Terry Funk Helen so uh style mid sentence. Alright, officials and Ampere's run out to break things up. Uh they finally get him off Zane and it, as it looks like he's leaving, he does his spirit uh sprint around the ring and runs through and already hurts Zane Zane with another big spirit. Ia Dragonoff runs out to uh, try and do something, but officials hold him back as Breaker taunts him. Ia goes and checks on Zane. We head to her commercial. All right, next match is Braun Strowman and Austin Truth versus Judgment Day. When we return, we see a John Cena career compilation video to hype his retirement tournament from WWE Money in the Bank. After that, we shoot backstage, back I mean backside the arena where the Judgment Day's team has outcomes. Carlito, Finn Balor, and JD McDonough. <sighs> The Miz and our troops theme his, and they come out rapping while in the ring. Rapping, they are attacked from behind. The Judgment Day Bronze Strowman's theme hits, and out he comes to even things up. The bell sounds, and our truth and Carlito kick things off for the respective teams. The truth start uh, hitting the Cena fighting knuckle shuffle and add to adjust judgment spots before the Judgment Day take over. On that note, we should gears into a mid-match, com- mid-match commercial break. As the action continues, when we return, Strowman chases Madonna into the crowd. Truth loses focus, and Balor gets the pin. So Miz isn't happy. So winners are the Judgment Day. All right, Anna Pierce backstage with CM Punk. All right, backstage, Anna Pierce is talking with CM Punk and telling him to go home, pet uh, Larry, and get medically clear, and then... He'll get him the match with Drew McIntyre. Punk says he will do that. We see Rey Mysterio and Selena Vega talking ahead of their mixed tag team mat- tag team main event tonight. We head to another commercial. All right, let's matches. All right, next one is the video thing. Uh, we see Dominic and Myst- Dom Mysterio and Liv Morgan backstage. Liv wants to go over some double team moves. He isn't interested. Liv grabs Dom's leg to help him stretch and then ends up holding his lay damn near over his head while he falls back on the couch on a couch in comes a judgment day to see him and this well opposition and they and they call him on it priest teases rhea ripley's return for tonight when this wraps up we return to um to cohen mcafee at ringside who introduced this week's vhs tape Bo dallas talks about being described as sick then sick is what it, what will be Chad Gable approaches Adam Pierce uh, backstage and says it's clear to him that they're referring to him in the Wyatt messages, messages every week. Pierce asks if he's ever questioned if it is him, why he walks off, and then Pierce ho- opens his office door and sees Bo Dallas sitting in a chair. So yeah, Dallas, Bo Dallas is there. Oh man. It's going to be crazy. All right, next match is Ia Dragunov versus Braun Breaker. Inside the arena, the theme for Ia Dragunov hits. Out comes the Mad Dragon for our next match of eating as he sells inside the ring. We shift gears into a mid-match, uh, pre-match commercial break. When we return, we see Damage Control v now where they talk about losing control uh, but vow to get back tonight. Braun Breaker's uh, theme hits. Out, come, out comes the bell, the bell sound. And off we go with what is sure to be a hard-hitting affair. The two mix it up in the earlier goings and then out of the blue pat my features rambly says braun is built like a brick shit house <laughs> which is course is bleeds off uh and, and pops coal we had to a mid-match break uh when we try we see breaker and dragon off still brawling all over the place breaker uh ends up throwing um a computer chair at him which gets it gets him disqualified out comes sammy zay to try and help him out as breaker keeps beating him being on dragon off outdoors he ends up beating Zane down too. But Dragonoff's leg is busted open pretty good. So winner via disqualification, Ia Dragonoff. All right, next match. <clears throat> next match. Is, next match is. Uh, excuse me. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, is is uh, damage control versus Lila Vakaria, King Carter, and Katana Chance. A vignette for Damon Priest challenging Gunther to show up to Raw next week. Eris Pat McAfee does his tell him. Uh, Tell a straight, uh, straight routine with the photo being when Liv uh, Morgan had Dominic in a composing position back uh, backstage when the Judgment Day came in, and that was funny. <laughs> back inside the arena, the theme for Damage Control hits out. They come for our n- next uh, match of the evening as they sell in the ring. We shake gears into a mid-match, uh, to a pre-match commercial break. We return the team, the team for a uh, Valkyria, King Carter, Katana, make their way at the bell. Sounds like off we go. We see after some back and forth action. 
we shoot uh, uh to a mid match break when we turn uh things start things uh we when we turn things finish up with Eel hitting over the moon for the win. Once the match wraps up, we see Zoe Star, Shannon Baser, and Sonia Deville hit the ring and beat down Eel Curry Sane and Dakota Kai. Deville and Baser hold Eel as Star yells at her that she took everything from her. They all hit the fingers on her and leave her lane as they pose over her. Alright, so winner is damage control. Winners are damage control. Alright, so next match main event coming up is Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan versus Rey Mysterio and Zelina Vega. Backstage, we see Jackie Redman interview Baszler, Stark, and DeVille who put the women's division on Noah's um, of walks. WWE Women's Tag Team Champions Alba Fire and Issa Dawn who laughs and say they run the women's uh, division. DeVille calmly tells them not for long and walks off inside the camera inside the arena. Uh, Cole McVay set up a video package for from Gunther responding to Damon Priest uh, from earlier, challenging him to appear on Raw next week ahead of, of their WWE SummerSlam Chaz 24 title team. Once that wraps up, uh, we learn next week's um, Raw with being uh, okay. Um, so next uh, SummerSlam is confirmed with you know that match. She is uh, all right. Alright, Liv Morgan theme Liv Morgan's theme hits out comes the WWE Women's World Champion for our final match of the evening. She's wearing a Dominic Mysterio shirt, which the commentators point out, and she stops and waits for Dom to come out with a big smile on her face. Out comes looking hesitant to be anywhere near her. As they sell inside the square circle, we head to a pre match commercial break where we return uh, the theme for Rey Mysterio hits out comes the LWO duo of himself as Zelina Vega for this mixed tag team uh main event we see some general opening action with some uh, with back and forth ag- action back and forth offensive shifts and then shift and settle into a quick mid match advertising timeout following our final commercial break of the evening we return we return to see don working over ray turn at a at the iconic mass of his father and trying to rip it off uh rip it off his head ray avoids this and eventually starts uh, fighting back. He has a big line up for a close two count. Dominic fights back with the three amigos, but Ray stops him at one. He goes for the 619, but Dom catches him. Zelina falls be, uh, behind and connects with the 619. Ray hits the top row from uh, Frog Splash and goes for the cover, but Liv breaks out. Liv slides a chair in the ring and knocks Ray off the top. While the ref gets rid of the chair, Dom hits a top rope from uh, Frog Splash uh, for the pinfall victory. Afterwards, lost in ex- excitement, he hugs Liv. He realizes what he's doing and backs off. Liv jumps in his arms and pulls him down on top of her on the mat. They get ready to kiss, and then the theme for Rhea Ripley hits, and the roof almost blows off uh, the roof, the, blows off the Ontario building as a piss off Rhea Ripley. Uh, Par walks down to the ring as Liv uh, looks like she's seen a ghost and runs off through the crowd. Ripley gets in Dom's face and says something off mic. Dom tries going for a hug just as the feed cuts off to end this week's show. Man, can't wait for to see what happens next week. So yeah, Liv Morgan is dead, man. And Liv Mor- and Dom, well, he's in trouble, but Liv is mostly dead. Anyways, um, sorry if I said that, but anyways, I don't care. All right, it was a good show tonight. Very good, funny, and stuff. But it was good tonight. Um. So, anyways, that was it for this video. Hope you like it. Like, subscribe, hit the bell button, leave a comment, or whatever you guys want to do. I don't care. But anyways, that was it, and I'll see you guys for the review for um, AW Diamond. All right, later's.